I have to give you some theorems on differentiation now. These theorems are absolutely simple, right? I you know them in fact beforehand, but I will just give you proof of some of the forms. So you'll realize it, okay, oh, oh, this is the reason that why it is happening. Yeah, and it is really interesting. It's really fun. Theorem of differentiation. The very first theorem says, the very first one says, let's say if I have y is equal to k times over fx. Some y equal to k times over fx, okay? It's k is some constant. And they say that the derivative of dy, this y, that is dy by dx, will become k times of derivative of fx, that is nothing but k times of f dash x. Constant will come out, the, uh, come out of the differentiation. For example, let's say if I have somebody asked me to derive dx of 2x square. So I can take this 2 out of it and I'll be left with d by dx of x square. Derivative of x square is 2x, so we get this 2 into 2x, which effectively becomes 4x. Simple, very simple to follow, very, very simple to follow. Sure, perfect. In the similar fashion, they tell you that if I have y equal to fx plus minus gx, okay, so if y equal to fx plus minus gx, then they say that derivative of this y, that is dy by dx, will become simply nothing but f dash x plus minus g dash x. Just simply, you have to derivative, take the derivative of fx and gx and add them or subtract them depending upon the given condition in the question. For example, let's say if somebody says that we have y equal to sine x plus x, different function fx and gx. So when I go for dy by dx, what will I do? I'll just take the derivative of sine x that will turn out to be cos x. I'll take the derivative of x, which is 1, and I'll just add them. Simply, you just keep on doing like this. All right, sure, very simple and easy to follow. Now, uh, a quick interpretation for you that where does this particular theorem comes from? It's a very simple application, I understand that. But where does it come from? So let me quickly show you the proof of it. All right, let's quickly discuss the proof of this. So this theorem, y equal to fx plus minus gx, then dy by dx is equal to f dash x plus minus g dash x. Okay, sure. Let's quickly move ahead. How am I going to do, prove this particular one? So let's do one thing. Take any one of them. So what I'm doing, let I am using some uh, px is equal to fx plus gx. Okay. Now, if I want to have the derivative of p x, that will be nothing but what? Limit h tending to 0. We will be getting this as p of x plus h minus px over h. As simple as it sounds. But px is what? fx plus gx. So in that case, what will happen? It will become limit h tending to 0. p of x plus h will become f of x plus h plus g of x plus h minus fx plus gx. Is that, that is what is the value of px will divide by h. Very simple result, right? Now, let me rearrange it. The moment I rearrange it, what I'm going to do, I will be actually taking up the f of x plus h and fx terms together and g of x plus h and gx terms together. So what will happen, this derivative p dash x will look to me somewhat like this, limit h tending to 0. I'm clubbing this f of x plus h minus fx. And I'll split that h from the denominator in both the, both the limits. Plus limit h tending to 0, we will be getting this as g of x plus h minus gx over h. Okay. Can you see what these standard results are? These results are nothing but what? They are simply p dash x is equal to f dash x plus g dash x. I hope this is sorted for everyone. Very simple drill to follow, right? Do you understand that how this is behaving? That p of x plus h turns out to be that f of x plus h plus g of x plus h. And then I'll just plug in the value into the first principle only and we have reached to this result. Sure. Now, so you, this was for addition subtraction, it was very simple. It becomes really interesting when I have that product rule, u into v, whatever you way you call it, fx into gx. So let me quickly take you to that one. So now let's say this is y equal to fx into gx only. All right, fair enough. So the product rule says that dy by dx is equal to d by dx of fx into gx, which is nothing but first one into derivative of second plus second one into derivative of first. That is f dash x into gx plus fx into g dash x. 
UDV plus VDU, that is also another way that people remember it. Right? If, let's say if somebody says that I have D of U into V, you can call this as U into DV plus V into DU. Right? It's exactly the same kind of observation that we people keep it very handy for ourselves. Alright, but I hope this is clear, right? This is not a difficult task. Alright? Okay. So this particular U and V is not a notation, it's just a handy way to remember it, and some people do remember it in that way. So now this rule is called up as the product rule. Right? Pretty simple and pretty easy to follow. Proof is really interesting, guys. Proof is absolutely wonderful. Let me show you how. So if I want to go ahead with the proof of this one, what do I have it here? I have y is equal to fx. Rather, again, I'll be assuming it to be some some function, assume it to be uh, call it some again, let's say some px is equal to fx into gx. Okay, that's what the assumption that I'm making. All right. And from the first principle of derivative, if I have to look for p dash x, p dash x will become what? Limit h tending to zero. We will be getting this as p of x plus h minus p of x over h. Simple basic formula, right? So that is the case. Then if I plug in the value for p dash x, it will become limit h tending to zero. So p of x plus h will become what? f of x plus h into g of x plus h minus px that is fx into gx whole divided by h when it was addition it was easy to follow but when it is product it becomes a bit difficult and i know that i have to create that f dash x and i have to create that g dash x for that matter i should have f of x plus h minus fx and g of x plus h minus gx so that is with this f of x plus h, what we have here, this one, I should get that f of x plus h minus fx. That can come only when I have a term which also has g of x plus h. Okay, okay. So I know that I have to create that f dash x. Keeping that in my mind, I have to get f of x plus h minus fx. So I'm adding and subtracting something. What is that? This p dash x, limit h tending to 0. I have this f of x plus h into g of x plus h. Now I'm adding a particular term and subtracting a particular term. So what I'm subtracting here is f of x into g of x plus h. So whatever that I subtract, I'm supposed to add the parents also, right? So I am supposed to add it. So what I've done, I will be adding that also. The moment when I add it, I'll be getting this as fx into g of x plus h minus, which was original one, fx into gx, whole divided by h. Is that okay for everyone, the drill, how we have done it? So this is the particular term which I have subtracted and which I have added. All right, sure, to be followed by everyone, simply, perfect. <clears throat> now, let me take the calculation forward. So what did I do? I know that I can easily take this common. So what I'll be getting actually, when I go for p dash x, that will become limit h tending to zero. I'll write that again, which was there on that page so that you can copy it properly. We have that f of x plus h into g of x plus h minus of fx into g of x plus h plus of fx into g of x plus h. This is something which I have added and subtracted this particular term, right? And originally it was fx into gx whole divided by h. Now please consider the first two terms here. These two and these two. And take common whatever is coming out to be. So this derivative becomes limit h tending to 0. If I take this uh, g of x plus h common, I'll get g of x plus h into f of x plus h minus fx over h right plus from the other two terms i'll be taking this fx common so if i take this fx common right i'll be splitting the limit also in fact in that case limit h tending to zero fx times g of x plus h minus gx over h fortunately you must have guessed it by now 
that this is the definition for what? F dash x, this is the definition for g dash x. Hence, I will be getting this as limit h tending to 0, g of x plus h into f dash x plus fx into g dash x. So when h tends to 0, this g of x plus h will tend to where? gx only. And because of that, this derivative will turn out to be f dash x into gx plus fx into g dash x. Sorted. Okay. So the crucial step was this only. This addition and subtraction. Isn't it really interesting? 